At the Center for Digital Strategies at Talk, we examine how information technologies affect individuals and how they enable business strategy. Through our BRIT Technology Impact Series, we've looked at IoT, Big Data, Cloud, Social, Mobile, and Video. This year, the BRIT Series is considering the convergence of all six of those technologies. So we invite you to listen in as our MBA fellows interview top executives in a series titled, Connected Everywhere, The Transformation to a Hyperweb World. Are there challenges in terms of security when customers are thinking about you know, access to so much information? Mm -hmm. It's a huge question right now. We've especially seen it with a lot of the data breaches by big brands in the last year or two. Um, for us, it's just at the heart and soul of everything we do. So um, within our platform, we actually don't want to hold any PII. Uh, we don't want any of our customers store credit card data, et cetera. And what's interesting is you know, we have an ecosystem of partners that we work with. So for instance, SailThrough is fully integrated with Facebook. Well, we don't even want to have those email addresses accessible to Facebook. So there's an MD5 hash that has to happen for that translation to happen. So I think what's interesting is that with all the press that's gone on in the last you know, two, two years in particular, the consumer is at heightened interest about their own privacy. So we're really trying to embrace that. And you know, uh, you'll hear our CEO talk a lot in the market about the idea of respecting the end user. And personalization goes a really long way. But if you don't respect the end customer's preferences, you're not going to go anywhere in terms of building long-term solvency around those relationships. So do you see that as the biggest risk right now is the security in terms of sale throughs um, growth, future growth? Uh, no, I don't. I think we're, we're um, practicing in a pretty cognizant way around the security side. I think the bigger thing for us is brands discerning between big data and big brother. Mm. So a lot of times when they browse the, when people browse the internet, they get borderline offended by the recommendations that follow them. So it's how do you attack that in a more subtle way or how do you do it in a more implicit way? So rather than just saying, hey, we know you looked at these six products and you came in through this Google keyword, how do you build a more branded experience about that that's true of the more holistic profile of the person that's coming in. So that's really on you know the client end for us. Earlier this year, we actually commissioned Forrester to come in and run a before and after model with one of our e-commerce clients to look at what were the tools they were using historically. So there were four different tools that they consolidated when they were ultimately able to move forward with sale through. One in personalization, mm. one in analytics, one in email, et cetera. Um, and what we were able to find from that was that they had 123% lift and ROI from using personalization and their payback window on their software was under one month, which is really, yeah. really crazy. So that's the type of work that I'm really focused on is less about talking about personalization in sort of a vaporized fashion, but more about getting in the weeds and showing customers the lift that it can drive, not just today, but in terms of long-term customer lifetime value. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when we think about this hyper-connected world, mm -hmm. kind of what is the next stage of yeah. Connectivity. So I think the next stage of online connectivity, and we're getting there now, is the convergence of online and offline. Um, and I probably have a slightly biased opinion on this, given that I work a lot with e-commerce companies and the brick and clicks, as I mentioned before. But I think what's really interesting is if you look at beacon technology, for instance, so what happens with being able to track customers the moment they walk into a store, tying that to online data is going to be definitely sort of the, the pinnacle point of personalization in that capacity. So for instance, if you're on a, um, retailer's website and you're looking for jeans and you look for them three times but you don't buy anything and then you walk into a store three days later, you're going to be able to replicate that personalized shopper experience of the small boutiques of even centuries ago of saying, oh, you know, we think you might be interested in this or pointing you to a certain set of inventory. At the same time, you know if you have a VIP shopper coming in or you, you can start to discern um, based on the, the behavior profile that you have available on each of those. So that's what I'm most excited about seeing sort of borderline minority report of, of of where the uh, the industry is going. And it's truly that omni-channel mm -hmm. experience of both having the online component, but then the traditional brick and mortar. And Absolutely. I think a lot of companies are struggling with the idea of they've, they've had a more traditional marketing mix mm -hmm. and they're moving or they're hearing that they've got to go non-traditional to be yeah. relevant. And mm -hmm. to do that, it's having a social media page. Totally. But in your experience, I'm sure it's not just about having that page, mm -hmm. it's about the content that's on there. So how do you kind of create that story for these um, brands to really 
to educate them in yeah. terms of it's not just about having these type of tools, but it's the right tools done in the right way. Absolutely. So I think, you know, your point about social media is a really good one where, you know, social media is great, but just using it as a broadcast tool, for instance, isn't going to do that much. It's really about the one to one interactions you have with each end customer. So I think about this, you know, I communicate with Delta a lot on Twitter. I'm a frequent traveler and I get really frustrated with them sometimes. <laughs> um, but what I find <coughs> is that even when I'm communicating them through direct message on Twitter, they know my profile. I don't have to remind them every single time of when I log in. They're kind of keeping track of that. So long story short, what I'm saying here is that that idea of the single customer view is what's paramount to all of those different channels. Because to your point, with each additional channel that you layer on, the more ROI you're going to get, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, you know, outs even outside of social, your call center ties back to this as well, too. But if you can't personalize that experience, then inevitably the end user is fatigued by it or they're underwhelmed. They don't necessarily see that as a channel to go back and capitalize on in the future. So as we see people expanded to those different areas, we really push them to be able to have an arsenal of data under one roof to be able to call upon to make that experience that much more compelling. I want to thank you so much for, for your time. Yeah, and thanks um, for having me. It's been great. It's been really great. So thank you very much. Thanks again. Appreciate it.